This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Do you drive a vehicle? Then you'll find AutoCorrect helpful, especially on Coach Charlie's Tip of the Week. Listen to our podcast with me, Coach Charlie Melton, on any podcasting platform or on the MPB Public Media app. From MPB Think Radio, this is Fix It 101, the home improvement show to help you do it yourself. I'm Jason Klein here with licensed contractor Jeff Sammons from Houseworks. Pam Pibus, ASHE certified inspector at Inspect It Like a Girl, is out this week. But we know she'll be back. I so, hope. No, she will. She's. I'm sure she's basking on a on a glorious golden beach somewhere. It, it, yeah, in in, in <laughs> I don't know. Actually, she did send a picture, said. and it was this gorgeous thing from what looked like Alaska or something. I don't well, know where she. You was, know, I called her. Awesome. I called her the other day, and she said, uh, uh, "I'm in Canada. What do you need? What do you want? Right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What do you want? Okay. Well, that's awesome. Sorry to bother you. Right. Um, it, one of the things I wanted to start off talking with this morning, it's it's really weird, Jeff. Um, did you guys have anything going on this week? Did y'all do anything special in your, uh, in your business? Did you have to change the way you work this week because of any heat or any? Yes, yes. You know, it's uh, we, we had this conversation just the other day. Um, we, prior to these, you know, 100 and... Uh-huh. 501 whatever temperature right uh we were framing houses in about three days Uh you know two thousand feet under roof right um in about three days now it it is taking a, a week or better to do this because you just simply cannot get the the productivity it is so hot. I wonder how long can these guys go before they've got to sit under a shade it, with some water. Yeah, I mean, it's a listen. It's a it's a real deal. It's mm-hmm. um, now you know everybody says, "Hey, let's get used to it." And yeah, I think you can get used to ninety and ninety five. Yeah, when it gets to one hundred five, I'm not sure you can get used to one hundred five. Well, I I went out uh, to to the junkyard again this this weekend, and and decided I was going to go hunting and fishing for parts yeah and i got out there and you know uh those kind of places there are no trees anywhere no so no no <laughs> plus all the metal all all just metal and hot yeah but but anyway if you're out there i was out there for about an hour yeah and it was all my body was ever going to take yep it, it, you know after that i had to stay in the rest of the day well even uh, my my swimming pool is hot <laughs> you know <laughs> like bath water hot. yeah yeah, yeah. So. Well, uh, speaking of hot, uh, someone said in an article this week that I just absolutely blew my mind because it did not come from some strange news source. This came from the Baldwin County Emergency Management uh, folks. This was uh, the the county that Mobile, Alabama is in. So anyway, they sent this thing out and they're talking about electric tankless water heaters. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to read you this. It says electric tankless water heaters are growing in popularity among new and remodeled homes, although marketed as energy efficient alternative to traditional storage water heaters. Electric tankless water heaters may actually cause more trouble than relief in high demand of electric tankless water heaters leads to increases in uh, the county's purchase power costs. The costs are being passed on to members. What they are saying, here's a look at why electric tankless water heaters may not be the best choice now remember this is a county's emc doing this it says number one their electricity demand is huge jeff we've talked about this it says when an electric tankless water heater fires up to heat water it requires a huge amount of electricity as much as thirty six thousand watts of power that's eight times more than the 400 uh 4500 watt demand of a traditional storage water heater sure Yep. Now you mentioned that that you've got an electric at one of your homes. We, we do uh, in 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 our downstairs kitchen and and uh, bath area. It is operated off of a two twenty um, right water uh, electric water heater, and uh, I, I'm telling you right now when when you call for that demand, uh-huh. the the power meter is just it's shaking the house. It's spinning so right. fast. <laughs> 
So, yeah, they, they require a tremendous amount of, of electricity to get that water that hot that right. quick. Okay. Um, <clears throat> another thing, the equipment used to support them may not be sufficient, it says. Many times a home's wiring and the utility company's equipment is not suitable for the load. That's why homes that use electric water heaters, uh, electric tankless water heaters, and their neighbors often have issues with flickering or dimming lights. Yeah. It's interesting. Yep. Uh, that that they're not that they use so much now, power that they're not that they may be uh, if it's improperly wired right. they'll be pulling. Now, let's don't confuse this just because we're talking tankless, we're not talking about gas. Right. Gas right. Uh, tankless, I I think is is the way to go. Now, they do mention here uh, uh, just straight up if you'll just go to a gas, these issues are not an issue with gas right, tankless right, water right, heaters. Right. It's just the electric. So this is this this was blowing my mind this morning when I read it. Okay, um, uh, new equipment. Here's another thing: new equipment, transformers, meters may have to be installed for this thing. Wow. Uh, in some instances, uh, the places will have to upgrade the equipment in place at a home to accommodate an electric tankless water heater at the expense of the homeowner yep. sometimes. So, so in other words, all this extra juice flowing in might take some. Anyway, just a, I was just kind of blown away getting this email with this article from such a, such a, I guess, trustworthy source. Right, exactly. You know, that's beyond opinion at this point. Is it um, usual for a, I don't know, a government agency to come out a, I don't. Are they against the electric water heater? Well, they're. <laughs> um, I, I don't know why in particular uh, they're saying the costs are are very real for at least Baldwin County. Now remember, this is Mobile. I guess they call it laying out facts. Because it yeah. kind of sounds like they are against it a little bit. I yeah. don't know. Well, it says, please note, gas powered tankless water heater users are not affected, um, but they're giving their their electric folks with electric water heaters uh some options to purchase anything else yeah uh -huh. you know the the, the only Crazy. reason uh, the only reason i have one mm -hmm. is because you what, don't have gas well yeah but i could do a tank mm -hmm. but I, I i don't have the the space where this particular heater is mm -hmm. is actually in a cabinet where a tank it's just not a tank will not work so but yeah if if i could do a tank absolutely i would right right i did want to clarify something that a couple of callers have called to uh, make me understand uh, mobile is not in baldwin county mobile is in mobile county baldwin county is east that's on the eastern mm. side. So two callers they, called they, to they, clarify that and tell me how. They called you out. They let me know. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I'd rather be correct <laughs> than cocky. Uh, anyway, uh, I did want to say that because it really, we've talked about electric uh, tankless water heaters on this show before, and I've not really had a lot of people, including an appliance person, an HVAC person, and you have all discouraged us from going in that direction. Yeah, I, I don't I don't like the electric. Okay. All right. I have a uh, an email here that we got this week, Jeff. I had my roof replaced due to hail damage, and I'm told the wood underneath is wavy, and so the shingles are not lying flat. Is that real? Is that true? Well, part of that is true. Uh, what, what does that mean? What's going on? Okay. Uh, we use a product called OSB, mm -hmm. Oriented Strand Board. What it is, it's wood chips glued together. Mm -hmm. And that's what we use for decking in this part of the, the country, if now, you Now, when will. you say decking, that's the stuff, that's the wood that goes on the outside of the house. That's the substrate that so my... So you're still losing me on your... Okay. On your, that That is the... That's the wood nailed to the uh, uh, roof rafters. There you go. Okay. okay. I got you. All right. It's nailed directly onto the roof rafters. Then there is a, a barrier. It's mm -hmm. called felt, uh, mm -hmm. synthetic felt or or non-synthetic felt. And then our shingles go on top of that. Okay. So on a good sunny day, look around. All of your neighbors, the roofs are a little wavy. Huh. Now, a brand new shingle, uh, 
uh, not so much when it's 100 degrees out, but when <laughs> it's a little colder, mm. they won't lay down as as well as they do once it heats up. Right. So um, so everything is kind of droopy right now. But Well, it, it, you, you're always going to have a few waves with, um, with the OSB. Um, now, now let me if ask. you go north, you mm-hmm. go up to South Haven, they use lumber. They they don't they don't use OSB uh-huh. because of the snow load, right? So it, it's not uncommon. Interesting. And and would it change based on the shingle? You know, it's funny because I see they went with a what do they call it? An architectural shingle, laminated shingle, which arch- kind of they kind of they kind of stand up a little bit differently. Yeah, kind of dimensional. Yeah, and and in other words, so I don't know that I would be able to see the waves on that as easily as I would kind of the flat you shingle. Know, it really depends on the sunlight. Huh. Um, okay. But, but yeah, it's it's common. Uh, the, the thing they need to do is uh-huh. drive around their neighborhood, look at their neighbors and say, oh, that looks just like mine. Okay. Or, ooh, mine is a lot worse than that. So, so <laughs> no, in other words, there's either nothing different or... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, I don't think they have anything to... Uh, be concerned with all right walker's on the line right now and has a question about that electric tankless water heater what are you thinking walker well uh when i managed real estate in memphis i had a restaurant and very often the hot water heater for restaurants are close to the kitchen which is good but very far away from the bathroom so it's really hard to get the water through the lines to the bathroom in a hot condition so what we did was we put very small electric hot water heaters under the bathroom sinks, they would heat the water until the hot water fed through, then they would shut off and that regular hot water would be the feed. Hmm. That's a pretty good idea. That, you know, Walker, I don't I don't have a problem with that. We we um we put those in a lot. Uh the demand there is is very short. Yeah, so that's- Cold water. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So this exactly. might be for like a bar sink or something like that. Yeah, you know, um, I, I I had a restaurant in Memphis too, so uh, <laughs> uh, I, I think we use those. Yeah, in, me too. In, in, in mine, Walker. Uh, but for you know bathrooms as well, and this works for doctors' offices too. Very often, it, it's exactly. A water yes. heater. Yep. Any office is far away from the. From the hot water heater, if the hot water heater is going to get to it eventually, you just waste a lot of cold water. You, right, right, and 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 th- those are not real expensive. Um, uh, I think most of those are running off a of one ten. So you, you're not you're not pulling the kind of power there that you're you know trying to pull when you're when you're filling a bathtub or right. you know washing dishes, taking a taking a shower. Right, and if they shut off as soon as the hot water gets to them, hey, exactly. Right. Yeah. That's a fantastic idea. When you say, Jeff, they're not that expensive, what are we talking about? What kind of figure? Oh, gosh. We, we bought one a couple years ago, and I, I think we paid, I don't know, 150 bucks or oh. something. Oh, okay. it, it's, it, it's, it's, not, it's not like, oh, oh my gosh. Like a, like is, a whole water heater situation. No, yeah. They're very small. Uh, they're about the size of a encyclopedia, maybe even smaller. Okay, so this is, this is to deal with a single fixture, typically? Correct. Correct. Okay. All right. All right. You know what? That's a great idea, Walker. Uh, and, and, a, and, a, and a good use, I guess, for that product, for the electric. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, the tank Yeah, it's just, a, it's just a plug and play. Right. Thank you, Walker. We appreciate it. Got an email in. Jeff, years ago, don't remember why, some holes were drilled into my garage floor near my garage door opener eyes. Uh, when my garage door repair guy came out days later, he discovered that the concrete dust that resulted had settled over the eyes, okay. and they could not see each other and kept the door from closing. Hmm. So they wiped them off with the damp cloth and checked regularly after, and the door works again. Yeah. What is uh, uh, the, this? They were saying that they have discovered that the eyes not uh, seeing each other. Yeah. can really ruin this garage door. So I guess if, if someone does not know, since they sent this email, um, 
and this is very frustrating if you've just bought a house or anything right. don't know and how the, the door won't close don't know how it works <laughs> and this is don't you know everybody laughs because you think oh how silly but it yeah. happens to everyone no it does it um, does and one of the most frustrating things I've ever done in my life is try to get two red eye beams to see each other yeah. with my uh, eye beams yeah. you know just, right, right. and you're at the wrong angle and you know so this is a real thing so when your door is not closing or wants to bounce up or something's just not happening right uh first thing to check are those two little eyes on the bottom yep, yep. um of your garage door one on the left one on the right and they're it looks like they're looking at each other and supposed to it's a safety issue yes so and 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 why is that why do those eyes exist jeff um the the theory is mm-hmm. a kid or animal or something could mm-hmm. could be between the garage floor and the door and the door would 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 hit right that and then the other safety issue there if that if that fails is when it when it senses or touches something it's supposed to come back up. bounce back right yeah, yeah. So. so yeah so do look at those uh red things and and even they do sell replacement for those if you happen right. to run over them with a bicycle or a lawnmower or knock them <laughs> off you know break right. it or, or whatever right. it's it's not real complicated now oh i do want to caution everybody and i mean i'm always harping on something but don't ever never never Touch the spring. Touch the spring. Never touch the spring. Never. Uh, death is at the end of that spring, oh, so yeah. you kind of want to stay away from it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I had a customer. It's been several years ago. Uh, we did a room addition for him, and um, new new homeowner. Mm-hmm. Um, something happened to the door. Uh huh. He got up there. Was going to work on, you know, I can right. fix this. Right. Okay. I'm that guy. Right. Never fixed one before in my life, but I can do it. Hi, Jason. Yeah. Nice so, um, without making everybody lose their breakfast, he, right. lo- he lost a couple fingers. He mm. got a pretty good cut in his head and he went to the, to the right. ICU. Wow. So it, do not touch them. Wow, that's amazing. Hey, Alan's on the line, and uh, Pearl, he's got another pointer about a garage door. Talking about pointers, I guess. Alan, you with us? Uh, Yes, sir. Yeah. What were you going to say? Yeah. Well, I had something very interesting to happen um, several years ago. My house faces east, west, or west, or east, and whatever. And that's where my garage door is at on the front. Well, certain times of the year, mainly in the fall, you know, when the sun's kind of in on the south side, it shines in real bright on those. On uh, the eyes? On the eyes. Oh, I and, never thought about that. Yeah, my, believe it or not, my door got to acting real funny one day. It would go up and wouldn't go up, come down or whatever. And, well, my garage door man told me, he said, we'll just swap the eyes. So I swapped them around, which I had to cut the wires, you know, and yeah. splice them back. But that seemed to help. But I guess that sun, for some reason, was affecting that. That's Maybe crazy. Wow. Eye. I wonder yeah, if you could put just a little, like, hand size shade over that eye so that it doesn't, you know, so that the sun doesn't hit that eye. That's really weird. I've yeah, never heard of that I before, but it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. That, that is yeah, interesting. Yeah. And I've heard that before, that people's actually had to shield one or both of them. Right. Yeah, the certain time of year, that sun will just, I mean, beam in on mainly one of the eyes. Um, right, and confuse and, it. And, that's never yeah. occurred to me. I, I mean, guess yeah. it's, I guess depending yeah. on which side your house is facing in the garage and all that other jazz. Yep, yep. You know? hmm. yep. Interesting. All right, thanks well, a lot, well, Alan. We appreciate it. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thanks. Um, you know, one of those one of those issues like that is 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 all it takes uh, for one of those eyes to come off, and it really make a bad day for you. Especially, you know, it always happens when you rain when it's raining. Of course. So you know that's when the eye doesn't or work. Or you're late. You right. Know. Right. And you're or you're stuck inside your garage and can't get out. <laughs> that one's even better. That one's even better. Uh, <laughs> Pull the red handle. <laughs> right. Okay. While you're out working at this, we have been talking about this. We talked about your guys out working, uh, your folks out working, because I know not just guys work for you. So stay hydrated. Drink plenty of fluids. Drink about 16 ounces before starting and five to seven ounces every 15 to 20 minutes. 
So uh, five to seven ounces every 15 to 20 minutes when it's this hot. So that's a lot of water. And, um, you know, I hope these guys are bringing it to sight because it's. Yeah, it's it's um, I, they're, they're all bringing water. OK. Yeah. Um, so and also it says avoid dehydrating liquids, alcohol, coffee, tea, sure. and caffeinated soft drinks. Um, but I did read a study a little while back that said don't avoid liquids altogether. People right. have heard their whole lives that they're not supposed to drink coffee and tea and caffeinated drinks when it's hot. So they just don't drink anything. Right. So then they get dehydrated so they say no do drink something but anyway something that was brought up you're listening to fix it 101 on mpb think radio i'm jason klein here with licensed contractor jeff simmons from houseworks <coughs> pam pibus ashy certified inspector at inspect it like a girl that's out this week basking in the cold of canada and if you missed any of today's program you can always subscribe to the podcast using any podcast app or the mpb public media app also if you want to join the conversation send an email of course fix it 101 at mpbonline.org sharon's on the line in uh collinsville i need to give that just a minute all right i will just give that a minute tell you what uh one of the things i wanted to talk about we were just talking about the garage door jeff and the safety you, you, you never mess with the spring on a garage door, correct? No. Right. However, one of the things that is recommended here in, in the DIY world that can be done and can look good if you will follow instructions and uh, I think you can change the look of your house drastically if you'll deal with that garage door. You can make a garage door look amazing. There's a guy in my neighborhood that just did this with some masking tape and paint. Mm -hmm. And it was actually just a plain facing garage door that just you know it's one of those metal regular garage doors that you see right just regular aluminum well he used masking tape and paint and now it looks like a windowed red barn door huh? thing that, that will it's so cool yeah it is it's, it's really cool and I'm, I'm like okay well that's a that's the way that they change the look of this home completely with a paint job and i thought you know painting your door uh it, it, it seems it's really not that big a deal if you use the correct paint, if you use the 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 correct method in which to paint so that the paint doesn't come off. Uh, there's a couple of ways to do prep and things like that, but it, it's just a really good idea. You know, Jason, I was waiting on you to introduce me for a second. Hey, but, Abram. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we did a lot of work with garage doors and like roll up doors. Yeah. And I will say, you never mess with the spring. You t like we had a to put, install the roll up doors that we did we had pipes on the end mm -hmm. so if you if you mess up and that spring slips then you're you're done for wow it's it is it is a dangerous game it to really play is. with yeah huh. so yeah. it is if you are thinking about getting a garage door i would definitely recommend hiring an expert Yes, yes, uh, absolutely. A roll up door or replacing it, uh, right. DIYing it is. DIY uh, is the paint yeah. job out front. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Don't, <laughs> don't replace it yourself. All yeah. right, Sharon's on the line in Collinsville. Sharon, what's going on? Um, hi there. Thanks for being there. Yes, we yeah. put a um, ceramic tile down, and it's got a pretty taupe colored grout like 16 years ago. Uh -huh. The room is 20 by 24, but it was supposed to have grout that had a ceiling in it where it wouldn't stain. Right. And, of course, it's been staining, and I called them after about eight years, and they said, oh, no, you still have to clean the ground and re reseal it. So I've tried the, the haze remover. I've tried the best thing I found on the Internet was peroxide and um, bacon soda. But it's a big mess. You know, it takes a lot of time, and right. it's stained. Is there any way? And some of it's so thick, I can't just recolor it with a pen or something. Um, Did you say one. this was this was uh, in the kitchen? It's the kitchen in the den. Okay, the kitchen. And so now it's got stains in the grout. Yeah. Right. And you know <laughs> what you're probably going to have to do is call a professional cleaning company that has the equipment to get deep to to clean that grout, suck the water back out. Uh, you know, like like you would do when you're cleaning carpet. Um, what 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 yeah. what what happens to to grout in a in a floor most of the time? When you mop it, that space between those two tiles act like a squeegee, 
it, it yeah, so, you, right. so so you take the dirt that's on top of the tile and you you mop it over the space between the right. two tiles <laughs> the that space kind of cleans that mop a little bit and all the debris will fall in there right right so you you, you need somebody that can actually suck that out like a uh, like a rotating brush and a vacuum at the same time and huh. that's that that's makes sense. That's a better deal than buying the equipment yourself. Oh sure. yeah, just yeah. Call call somebody, and I I think I think you will be pleasantly surprised. I can tell in your voice that it's bothering you, and I get that. So it that kind of stuff bothers me. So I think I'd spend the money and get it cleaned. And Sharon, let me tell you this: as the as the true do it yourselfer of the show, uh, the 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 I'll try it guy. Um, at this point, I will have I would have already gone to the store and rented the big cleaner that you can buy at the store, <laughs> and that would have wasted that much more money. Uh, <laughs> so, so you, it may not be a bad idea to make that call. I don't think so at all. Why? No, and you're and you're and and you know you're not spending a tremendous amount of money doing this. Yeah. Right, and then just resell it. Yes, there ma'am. you go. Yes, there ma'am. you go. <laughs> Clean it and resell it. All right. Thank you so much for being there. Have a great day. Thanks, All right. Sharon. You too. Appreciate it. Let's keep Bye-bye. on moving. And uh, Robert's on the line in uh, Richland and about a uh, tankless water heater comment. What's going on, Robert? Well, I've got a, had a new, new tankless hot water heater put in his house. Uh, it's a T A K D A I D A. I forgot the name of the thing. T A K A D I. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. A-D-I. Okay. Uh, I had a tank with hot water in my last house for 16 years. Had no problem with it. Uh-huh. But this one, I can go in and take in a shower, and the water is adjusted right, and about three fourths of the way through, it just turns cold. Okay. And I can push it, push it up all the way to hot, and it still stays cold. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, sometimes I can turn it back to cold, and then turn it back to hot, and it'll come up. It'll come back, warm back up. Okay. There, but, when when that is happening, there's going to be an error code on that tankless heater. You you need to uh, contact the person that installed it or the manufacturer. Let them know what that error code is. And uh, um, it's it's probably a very simple fix, uh, but that it should not be happening. So th- there is something wrong with that tankless. Have you done any of the maintenance on it, Robert, to clean it or anything over the years? Well, it, you just put it in, didn't you? Oh, okay. It's, it's less than a year old. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's it's giving you an error code. Okay, I had to get. Some- I can't see the air go while I'm taking no, a shower. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That would be that would be quite uh, amazing if you could do that. So, uh, yes. Yeah, right. so, so, let's right. let's. Um, I would I would suggest turning the water on, uh, put it on full hot. Go up in the attic. You don't necessarily have to be in the shower. Just turn it on. Go or, up in the attic, or wherever or your not, yeah, wherever your tankless is, and see if you're getting an air cut. It's, it's in the garage. I don't have to open it. Good. Open Good. It. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. Me and uh, when I lived in New Albany, we had a tankless water heater, and ours would do the same thing. I always just thought it was a faucet problem, but I guess that's just a, uh, that's an error problem. I, I, th- I think tank. it is. I think it is. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. All right, Robert, we appreciate it. Uh, chase that down. It might be where you find it. All right, let's keep moving. Lauren is on the line in Natchez and has a follow-up on that grout thing we were talking about as far as cleaning that grout. Uh, Lauren, are you with us? Yes, I am. So what were you going to say about the, the tile grout that was not cleaning properly? Okay. Uh, what I did after having um, tile down for uh, probably a couple of decades, it, it uh, of course, had turned gray, I got my spray cleaner with bleach and a grout brush and, and cleaned it. I didn't spend a lot of time, but I did clean it. And then I used grout paint, and you paint the grout lines. And it sounds tedious, but it really goes fast. You give it a couple of coats, and you can make it any color you want, and it holds up fairly well. 
You can wipe the grout paint when it does get dirty. You can't scrub it with a brush, but you can wipe it. And it's, it's very durable. It's a thick, thick latex paint, and I was very pleased with the result. How? Let me ask looks you. Like, looks like brand new. I've never yeah. done this before, Lauren. Let me ask: Does is is it in like a a, a is it in a brush form or like a like a? Uh, no, yeah. it's in, it, it's in a little squirt bottle, but that's silly. I just uh, would squirt some in a container and then use like an artist brush or a real small brush and uh, p- uh, paint the grout lines. You give them two coats and then you take like a washcloth, go back over it because it's going to get on the tile. Right. It comes right off the tile. You know, you get use a wet, a damp cloth right. and it'll come off the tile and stay in the grout line. And it, it'll totally transform the tile, look wow, brand that's new. that's amazing. I just didn't know what the application process was, like how you do that. Yeah, no, I'm picturing myself doing it, and it is all over the tiles in my floor. <laughs> well, see, and no, I'm, no, I'm no. thinking in my no, head. No, you, yeah, you, uh, you, just an artist brush, a flat, uh, squared off one, not a pointed one. Use a squared off one, and uh, just depending on what grout line size is, just a squared off brush. And put it, put the paint in a small container, real small, and then just dip it like if that was your paint can. Okay, you know what I'm thinking of? Um, you remember when you were younger and you would get the paint sets that had the had the like eight to twelve little yeah, little right. things that you would dip your. Right. That's the that's right. the paintbrush I have in my head that you yeah, use to do your grout. No, no. yeah. thing, yeah. <laughs> Almost no, like a, a nail polish. <laughs> no, no, it's bigger, bigger than that. So maybe, um, maybe depending on your grout line, a half an inch wide, you know, maybe a, a fourth of an inch wide, just depending on how wide it is, and give it two coats and then clean up the sides of it. And it, okay. like I say, it does go fast. It sounds tedious, but it does go fast. And That's fantastic. You, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here looking at it online right now, and uh, I'm sure I'll get 9 million emails now. <laughs> <laughs> paint and grout but right. yeah they, they 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 do have some unique applications to do that that's awesome right. cool. so thank yeah. you lauren we appreciate yeah. that that's another option Thanks for for, for uh, that caller yeah that i hope help. sharon's still listening yeah yeah all right so i've got an email this morning that that i think is pretty extensive and jeff this has just got you written all over i'm ready all right you ready all right, you got your Google machine ready? I got to go. <laughs> All, right. See ya. All right, our son purchased a conventional house that was built in the 1950s. The surrounding yard has been neglected over the years with shrubs growing and leaves and debris building up around the house. We found much rot in the floor joists and subfloor, which was cut out and removed. We then put in new joist sections and floor decking in those areas. Our son then installed new vinyl plank flooring throughout the house. Well, now he's discovering moisture where the new subfloor and vinyl plank is under the vinyl plank. Mm -hmm. He's pulled up the vinyl plank in those areas. They are running the central AC, of course, in this heat. Do you have any suggestions to why and any solution to this problem? He has installed three crawl space fans prior to this issue. And we also put up all uh, pulled all shrubbery and corrected the drainage issues. Mm. Even built little roof-type boxes to cover the air vent holes around the foundation. The dirt underneath the areas that are uh, that are sweating are dr- is dry. He's getting ready to go under and clean a white powdery mold in those areas. At this moment, I do not know whether he's spraying what he's spraying the mold with. I told him that y'all had advised not to use bleach, but I don't remember what you recommended to use. How do we stop this moisture problem? Love your show. Thank you so much, Ann. Okay. Well, obviously there is still moisture under the house. So yeah. Oh yeah. We we put all new stuff in, but we did not cure the problem. Right. Uh, I didn't see anything about Visqueen under this house. I would like to see Visqueen. Yes, um, and and uh, for those uh, uneducated, that what's visqueen? Uh, plastic, heavy heavy plastic. Right, it does uh, look like a big garbage bag. Yeah, yeah, Giant I, garbage I like bag. it. Yeah, for, I like for those it uneducated. La- no. Me laying <laughs> laying directly on the ground. Mm-hmm. There's 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 water coming from somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, I would also caution this white microbial growth Mm -hmm. i would be extremely careful with that what in your experience have you seen what is white 
microbial growth. Um, that seems pretty moist to me in my the head. The white scares me a lot. Uh, most of the microbial growth that, that harms you is what you can't see. Right. Um, so, But any, I don't like any of it. Right. So my suggestion is hire a professional uh-huh. that, that can clean that have the proper PPE right and um and find where this water source is well and i thought you know now that you're saying i'm thinking about they th- this water uh seems to be in the same place that it was before yeah. when they, they had a they, problem they they've got a leak or they have a drainage issue right right there yeah. at that spot yeah that's interesting um i don't know and, they, and it's probably small it's probably something that has gone over. Well, it's something from, that they wouldn't obviously long, notice. Yeah, from from long term. Right, so. and 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 something not uh, affected necessarily by uh, rain and weather because it's been dry now for a minute. Yeah, you know? or, I don't know. I didn't catch where they were living, but yeah, uh, it is around here. It is yeah. okay. Yeah. So um, anyway, so do you think a leak would come from like the joint or just like in the middle of a pipe or something? I or? mean, it could be anywhere, but It'd be it, in the roof. It sounds to me that they have a a um, a freshwater leak somewhere. Mm. Interesting this is what it sounds like. Okay. So. Another thing I wanted to ask this morning um, was this weekend. Uh, I think I told you, Jeff, I was out uh, looking at the car parts. Car parts. Right, right. And um, uh, I saw some paint on a car that was on a, on a car that had been, someone had had brush painted a car. No. Nice. And I had never no. seen this before. They had mm. used a brush like home paint. Interesting. Yeah. So. I, that does not look good in my head. Did it? Did it look nice or? No, not not even some. <laughs> I, I think that probably went down, starting out with hold my beer. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, Just cover up something. I was shocked about that, and I thought I had to tell Jeff. <laughs> and I saw a car painted like a house. So, well, uh, look uh, for my DIY experience recently. I. Uh, actually, based on you guys' recommendation, I replaced my thermostat oh, good. With, a, with a smart thermostat. Good. Um, and I don't know if you – I'm sure you've done smart thermostats before. Sure. Um, but you get it set up with an app. And when we first got it set up, we had all the wires correct and everything. There's like 18 wires that goes through right. it. Um, and then we got it set up and on the app, and it had just the wrong setting on the app. So it was blowing hot air for like two hours straight before oh, we realized no. that it just oh, wasn't no. cooling. <laughs> So there was just like a little slider switch that you had to click on the app that said it, it like it ba- it defaults to like hot air or something like that. Just a little slider switch on the app. You bought the northern version of it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Got to get the south of the Mason Dixon yeah, version. Yeah, wherever the uh, the smart home comes from. That's, so bottom line, it's fixed. It's working. It's fixed. It's good. It's doing its best it can with uh in a hundred degree weather. Oh okay. yeah. You know what? I will say I feel for the AC guys, even though they're just racking in money because they're getting calls right now about people saying their houses aren't cool enough. And there is nothing anybody on the planet can no, do. I mean, yep. you know, air <laughs> air conditioning sucks hot air out of the house. So, yeah, you know, it's it's it makes the leftover air hotter. And I think I read somewhere it's like thirty degrees cooler than outdoor temperature is. I best think it that's can about get. right. Yeah, that's so, about um, the most they can give you. Yeah, yeah, if 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 that much, which is very nice. Yeah. So, yeah, I've heard twenty five. Yeah, more, yeah. Yeah. So, but let's say it's a hundred outside. So, <laughs> right. if you can get seventy five inside, I that's think a good day. I think mm-hmm. it's a great day. Yeah. yeah, that's about what we've been sitting at. Us so. too. All right. Us too. Yeah. All right. Uh, Suzanne's on the line in Ocean Springs, uh, and uh, a barrier under the house and insulation. Oh, you're talking about what Jeff was talking about earlier, the Bisqueen. What's going on? Yes, I, we had a we have a small house in Ocean Springs. It does have a crawl space. It's about I don't know, two and a half feet or so mm-hmm. under there. And we had an uh, exterminating company put the termite things around it. Bait. Termite. Yes. And then they also put the, I guess it's disgain or whatever, a moisture barrier. And right. Some sand, some sand under it, and they put the moisture barrier over it. It looks like the big trash bag. Yep. And <laughs> somebody said... Because the insulation under the house also has some sort of covering over it, that it will trap moisture in between. 
Is that true? When the sides are open, the sides all have, like, um, um, lattice okay. over them. Yeah, so the, the visqueen is on the ground. The insulation is put in the in the floor joists, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. No, that that's I don't have an issue with that. Now you do want proper ventilation, um, yeah. and oh. and proper drainage, uh, mm-hmm. you know, from from rainwater around your house. Right. Well, it has that, but the, the, the somebody in the neighborhood said, "Are oh, you just going to trap moisture because the." The insulation is also covered by some material. I'm not sure what it is, but the insulation is not, you know, it kind of hangs down a little bit. I, I don't Does know. somebody in your neighborhood pay your mortgage? Well, but but wait, is the is the insulation new or has it been there? I think some of it's been there and some of it's new. Okay. Well, if it's been there, I, I'm, I, I don't agree with that it's going to trap moisture. Uh, unless there's some visqueen nailed to the bottom of those those floor joists, if it is if it is installed properly, that that is that is proper building 101. Okay, awesome. Thanks so much. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. It's really weird. On the show, we've come across several people. Uh, it's it's the roofs. And foundations seem to be the places where construction folks will arm wrestle each well, other. You know what well. I'm saying? Because in other words, it's like uh, it, it, there there are different opinions. But what I am finding since we've had this show is that boy, geography is everything. Yeah. In in doing this, in other words, roofs and and, well, and crawl spaces are different you know, here than they are uh, uh, 300 miles north. A mm-hmm. lot, a lot is common sense. Mm-hmm. If I have water running under my house. It is going to cause some damage somewhere, sometime. Right. Get the water away from your house. And I don't care if you're on conventional slab, on on pilings, if you're down on Mississippi Gulf Coast. Uh-huh. Um, get the water away from your house. Keep the area dry. Right. Now, and, and keep proper ventilation on both foundation and the roof. I want ventilation on both of them. I want air movement. This is so crazy. Think about what we're asking for, folks, here in Mississippi. Keep it dry and keep the air moving. <laughs> right. Wrong state. Yeah. And whatever you have to do to make that happen. Right, right. Yeah, it is all it about happen. geography. And right. you gotta you gotta think about like the things expanding and right. compressing right. and man. All right, Joan's on the line for uh the last call of the hour. What's going on, Joan? Hi. Yeah, I want to um, just reference back to the person that called about moisture mm-hmm. on the sub floor. Yes. We had, uh, excuse me, we had a house in um, Long Beach that was an older house. It was on piers mm-hmm. above the ground. And the first thing we did was we put spray in, uh, insulation under um, under the joist so that that whole area was um, sealed. And then we had for flooring in the house, and this is, you know, it's a wooden structure. So it's got, um, you know, it's got the joists, it's got plywood subfloor, and then we put vinyl in the kitchen. Um, and we lived in it for several years, had no problems. Um, then we turned it into a rental. And after about two years, we heard from the uh, tenants. They were saying, you know, this floor in the kitchen's kind of spongy. It's like... We're afraid Uh-oh. to walk in a certain area. So my husband and I went over there and discovered that that floor was so <laughs> broken <laughs> that, um, you know, the, we had to tear the, the vinyl off to see, you know, what right. was going on. And that flooring was eaten up with moisture. It was absolutely uh, destroyed. So we had to rip out, the, you know, the, um, the plywood, right. replace that. And then put new vinyl down. Wow! I, I thank you, Joan, for calling. That was that's a uh, that's a rough one. We're going to have to uh, wrap with that one, unfortunately. Well, there's a leak somewhere. Yes, and uh, got to find that and fix it before it'll matter fixing anything else. Fix It One Hundred One is a production of Mississippi Public Broadcasting Think Radio and is funded by the generous contributions from listeners like you. Our show is produced by Mr. Java Chapman with podcast production by Abram Nanny. And here talking also. Also, our call screener today was April Nanny. For Jeff Sammons and the absent Pam Pipus, I'm Jason Klein. Stay tuned for 10 o'clock today's Everyday Tech. 
on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone.